Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be painting the front and the rear bumper for the charger. Other than the body, these are the last pieces that I need to paint. As I always do, I delete or I fill in with a little bit of icing the license plate bracket mounting holes so they're a little depression and I don't run a front license plate on any of my cars. So just do that. Also, there was a little nick right there. And over here, there was kind of a large nick. So all that's good. I'm gonna scuff both the front and the rear bumper now, and then I'm gonna make sure there isn't any more damage to them. And I'll seal these little areas, and then I could get them based, and then get them cleared, and then we'll have the bumpers done, and that'll be pretty much almost everything painted. I'm just really gonna be happy to see these painted because they're uh, they're just so wide. I mean, the front bumper, these uh, these ducts are just so big, and it's just gonna look really cool. Another thing I like about the Charger front bumpers compared to the Challenger ones is the flare is actually molded into the bumper, so it's not a separate piece. I finally was able to get the bumpers ready to paint. The front bumper had quite a bit wrong with it, but the rear bumper, it was, I didn't find anything. Hopefully I don't find anything after I paint it, but it was pretty much good. So. I just scuffed the rear bumper, the front bumper, like I, guys show, like I showed you guys. I got rid of the license plate hole dimples um, on new bumpers. They just have the dimples because they're not pre-drilled. And I don't run front license plates on any of my cars. So shave those. I also found a scratch. This was the last scratch I found, fixed that. There was a nick right there I fixed. Also over here, there was a nick right there and that cut right there I fixed as well. So now the front bumper is ready to go, the rear bumper is ready to go, and I'm gonna be very happy to see these in paint. And then all I have left to paint is, I guess the door handles, I forgot about those, the mirror caps, in the body of the car. So painting the rear bumper. I was gonna paint both bumpers, but the front bumper had some issues. So those scratches actually ended up being a lot deeper than I thought. After I sealed it, you could still see them. So once I sand the sealer down tomorrow, it should get rid of those scratches, but it was just unfortunate that I couldn't paint both bumpers at the same time. But this thing looks really good. I mean, she's just, man. I love this color. Once you get it on stuff that has multiple, multiple angles, it just shows the color so much better. I can't wait to see the car done out in the sun, but I guess tomorrow I'll come and paint that bumper.
So just got back home. My friend Chris came over to help me bring both bumpers safely home after painting them. And he has a minivan. So it was really nice to be able to put these inside the minivan and not have to worry and wrap blankets around them and not have to worry about wind blowing them around in the back of my truck. But now that they're painted, I'm really happy because these things look great. It's just one of those things. It's really hard to paint bumpers, especially with this many contours, without getting any defects in them. So I just am really happy that that's over with and the only thing left to paint is the car. So I guess I'm gonna end the video here. In the next video, I'll be painting the car. Um, well, in the next charger video, I think I'll be painting the car or maybe I'll be gluing the, I think I'll glue the roof on and do all the rest of the 600 grit and then paint the car. I think that'll be a really good video. But if you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, comment below. As always, see you guys next time. After I painted the bumpers, I was doing something and I ended up messing up the carbon fiber roof. It's not 100%. If I just painted the roof, it'd be 100% fine, but I want the carbon fiber to show. So what I was doing was I was sanding it to clear it and before I glued it on, and I ended up sanding through to the fibers, which I tried to fix it with resin, and you could just see the fibers are messed up, and it just is like a different shade compared to the rest of the roof. So unfortunately, that happened, and the reason it happened was because I didn't use gel coat, and I, I was using a DA just to kind of get it done quick. You know, the combination of those, it was just, you know, it just happened, and I didn't want to glue the roof on, and then have that spot where the, f the fibers look different and it didn't look right. It just, it just looked really bad. So unfortunately, fourth attempt at the roof and I'm getting really good at setting it up. So I'm not gonna show any of this. The next video, we'll get the car painted, get the roof glued on and so on. The body is 100% ready. As you guys saw, the bumpers are really, really nice and perfect. But yeah, this roof is just, just killing me. Just killing me, just time consuming and I just want to get it done. But uh, you know, I didn't want to glue something on there that wasn't, wasn't gonna look good. And I didn't want to, I don't want to end up painting it. So unfortunately it happened, but we're fixing it. And like I said before, you know, I was gonna have the car painted this week, but the whole roof thing happened. I couldn't glue it on. And I just had to wait for some materials. So um, really why it happened was because the mold release that I was using was so hydrophobic that it wouldn't, the, the gel coat wouldn't actually lay out. And I was putting so much on that it was just, it was just too much. It was too thick, um, it would run. And I never had that happened before. And I was talking to the guy from Black Ops Auto Works that makes all his carbon fiber parts. And I was like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with this gel coat. I can't get it to lay out for some reason on this mold. And he's like, what mold release are you using? So I, I used what I was using before, which is Pardol, but uh, it's just really weird that the company that I was buying all the supplies from, I ordered the gel coat and I ordered the mold release from them. And you would think that they would say that you cannot use that mold release with the gel coat. So if you're using a gel coat, you cannot use that free coat mold release. It doesn't work, just use Pardol. Um, and it, it should, you know, you could use Pardol over that mold release and you shouldn't have any issues regardless just using Pardol. It's just a green, it's just a green um, alcohol based, uh, it's like plastic dissolved in, it's a PVA. Uh, it's like plastic dissolved in alcohol or whatever. So it works good, that's what I'm using on this. And we'll just get this thing done and unfortunately it happens. So next week, should be getting the car painted unless I end up having to pick my Tesla up in New Hampshire because I can't find a shipping company to pick it up, which I, I just always have shipping issues. I don't know, I don't understand what it is, but we'll get this thing done. We'll get it painted. We'll get the new roof done. I'm not gonna really show any of it. You guys have seen me make plenty of these. I'm getting really good at setting it up, but I am going to end the video here. In the next video, we will be painting the car at the body because everything else is painted. The bumpers look awesome. The hood looks awesome. Everything else looks awesome. The roof will look awesome. So I'm going to end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click that subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.